Maureen, the 10 admin tasks that you should not be doing ever. Oh, my goodness. What do you think they're going to be? Oh, I don't know, but I'm pretty excited. I might have an inkling of what a few of them are, uh, Carmen, but I can't yeah. wait to get into it. Well, um, bef be uh, between you and me and all of the world, I'm not very good at admin tasks and I don't really enjoy them either. So I think it's a great idea to get support on them in your business. So um, shall we get stuck in? Yeah, I think let's go. Awesome. So as you'll see on the next slide, the first thing that I really think people should consider getting support on is responding to emails and direct messages. So on this next slide, you'll be able to see um, the lovely Jonathan there. So Jonathan, he is the master who's in my um, email and my LinkedIn and my Facebook and he's in your stuff too, isn't he, Maureen? Yes, he is, um, and he's great because he alerts me um, to to anything that's that's really important, direct messages that anyone se um, sent to me. So I don't actually physically have to be there, you know, stuck to my phone all the time. Yes. So, Maureen, what happens when you get a message from a potential um, client? What what happens with Jonathan? Um, so sometimes he can just handle it himself. So if he um, if they're asking a question, they'd like to, to um, have a meeting, then he's got we've got systems in the back end. He knows exactly what to do. Um, and in fact, that is booking an appointment with Carmen <laughs> and then sending the message. Sometimes he might get a message that he doesn't know what to do because um, they might someone might be wanting to date me, Carmen. Ooh. Or um, someone might be, it's, you know, might be a little bit vague or it might be someone that I know. And then he'll send the message across to me um, and I will respond um, back to him with, with the words that I want him to use for that particular message. Yeah. And and I love I love that. Um, it just makes it more efficient because one of the things I think about is how many inboxes do we have? So people just often think about their one email, although a lot of our clients have like five emails. Um, but it's also all your other inboxes, your Instagram, your Twitter, your this and your that. Um, what about if you had one person that was in it all and just bringing the things that were really important to you? So I, I don't know how many messages I get a day. I know hundreds probably. Um, and so Jonathan um, can handle quite a lot of them himself, but there's probably five a day that he sends to me and he and then he needs support around those ones and, and the, the rest he just manages. And Maureen, I know that you are a big, um, a big advocate for uh, thinking about how long small things take. So Maureen, if if I just send you a message asking you to think about something, um, how long does it actually take out of your day? Um, it takes a whole lot more because you have to, you know, we say we're multitaskers, we're not really, we're multi-switchers. So, um, and it might sound admirable that you can switch from this to that to, you know, whatever, but each time it takes your brain, um, you know, energy, and that time to recalibrate. So it takes what, what might be seem like a 30 second distraction can actually be, you know, a couple of minutes. And then it's then you've got to bring your brain back to what you were focusing in on in the first place. And there's another couple of minutes and that all adds up. Yes. I know the scientists, they've said um, people who think they're multitasking um, actually have a reduced efficiency. They just don't know it. So it's really good to, to have someone um, doing a lot of that doing for you and then just batching the things um, that they can't do for you. Now, the number one question I get asked around this, as you'll see on the next slide, is does my virtual assistant answer as themselves or they pretend to be me so what's your take on this maureen um i'll oh, just a shout out to sue west who just um wrote a comment before um yes, yes sue. Sue, we're happy to um send you a um a, a link so you can re-watch this at your um pleasure um when you have time um and anyone else in that situation we can do that as well just put a comment in the um um below um back to your question carmen so um this one is quite interesting. Um, I sort of touched on it before. Um, it's really up to you. So if you feel that um, you feel so um, clear that you want 
to be everything to come from you and that you don't want anyone to know that if there's a virtual assistant answering, then you're sure you can do that. Um, I myself personally um, prefer um, to be a bit more upfront. And so our virtual assistant, Jonathan, will off often say, hey, Maureen's in a meeting right now or I I'm going to go and speak to her and get an answer for you. But he signs off as, uh, uh, as himself. What are your thoughts, Carmen? Yeah, so as you'll see on the next slide, I've actually got some real-life text of something Jonathan sent to someone. Um, so he often identifies himself, um, hi, Ben, this is John, Carmen's VA. So some clients use like to say it's, you know, Carmen's virtual, um, virtual assistant or executive assistant or whatever title you guys um, want to make. Um, I got this message before she did, so I thought you'd appreciate the speediest reply. Um, so it's it's not just that she's in a meeting, it's that, it's that you know, you're going to get a quicker response than, than if you wait for Carmen because she might never respond. Um, and then 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 there's the, the content. So it might be about organising a meeting or, or actually, you know, thanks for that offer, but, you know, that's not our focus at the moment, like a nice no, and then he signs off as himself. When I speak to people that have um, interacted with Jonathan, like, you know, as they've come to have a conversation about potentially become clients they talk very highly um, about the experience with him so um, th that's just an example of the text that can be used and I've got another example as you can see on the next slide um, on, on, this is confirming an appointment for the next day and so one of the things I realized with um, Jonathan was that uh, people would book appointments and then they hadn't um, uh, said, yes, they're coming. And so now the day before, Jonathan's got a process where he checks to see if they're coming to the appointment tomorrow. If they haven't said yes, he sends them this message um, and just say, hey, you know, are you still coming? Because sometimes even if people haven't selected yes, they know it's there or sometimes they're like, oh, oh, thanks for the reminder. So that's an example of another script. Now, Jonathan's and, got... And is that, Carmen, too, that can really change your conversion rate. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like a simple thing that, you know, that you can systemise in your business to get someone to, to remind people they've got an appointment because people rely on it these days, don't they? Like we expect yeah. our, our chiropractor to send us a reminder or our doctor or who, whoever, you know, online as well. So it's really great that you get that off your load and then you, you get your fantastic virtual assistant to do it for you. Yeah, and I, I also think it... Um, I don't know, it shows uh, like a, um, uh, I don't know, like a little bit of status around going, hey, I need to know if you're coming because like, we're organising my diary for tomorrow. Like we don't say it like that, but that's that's what it is. It's like can we use that slot for something else? Um, so as you'll see on the next slide, one of the most common objections to all of this is, but they can't answer all of my messages. Um, and the thing is, no, they might not be able to answer all of your messages. And Jonathan's got it to a stage where he can answer everything except probably five of my messages a day. Um, but he didn't start like that. And so what I say to people is start with the high volume, like lower risk messages. Like what are the things you get all the time that there's a standard response to? What are your thoughts around that, Maureen? Um, yeah, def definitely. Um, and the thing is, you start seeing patterns for yourself. You go, oh, interesting. I'm tending to get that same question all the time. So no, not even. Um, so it, it is not only the opportunity to get clearer about what questions get asked and write appropriate responses for your virtual assistant to answer, but then you can also, if you find your virtual assistant is getting similar sorts of questions, you can also potentially um, create some downloadables or you know other tools to answer the questions that people are often um, asking you. So it's sort of got a, a two twofold benefit there. So just reminding everyone today, we are talking about the ten admin tasks that you should never be doing in your business. And number one is re responding to your own emails and direct messages. Yeah, and I think it's low-hanging fruit. And if if you're going to get support anywhere, start here. And as we move on to the next thing on the next slide is connecting with people on LinkedIn. Now, if you are not working LinkedIn and you're a B2B business with a high deal value, then I think you're really missing out. LinkedIn is a very powerful place. Uh, Maureen and I've supported hundreds of people to get um, their business rocking on LinkedIn. Now, Maureen, how do you, how did you used to connect to people on LinkedIn before oh, the virtual system? Oh, shush up. 
calm and she always has to tell this story. So uh, I, <laughs> I've been using, I'm an early adopter of LinkedIn. I just didn't adopt or uh, learn to use it very well. So in the beginning, I used to just go, oh, he's quite cute. Click, you connect. Oh, he's quite cute. Oh, she looks like a nice person. Click. So that was that was as far as my my strategy went for who to work, uh, connect with on LinkedIn. So these days, Carmen, we have much better strategies to use. So would you like to tell people about those? Yeah, so it's obviously about working out who you want to connect with and not just the handsome men. You can do that too. Um, but, you know, what industry? Uh, and, and we can create a whole strategy around that. And then you can get your virtual assistant to actually do that day in and day out because LinkedIn's got limits. And so um, they can log in every day and connect with various people. Now, as you can see, Evan here, she's one of our, one of our amazing virtual assistants who works on social media, um, of which LinkedIn is one of those things. Now, the the reason you want to connect with people on LinkedIn is because once you're connected to them, then there's lots of magic that can happen. One is they're more likely to see your content on LinkedIn. Two, it means that they um, are actually uh, connected with you and they might check out your profile and learn more about you. And three, once you're connected to them, you can actually send them stuff um, of value um, and say, hey, check this out. Hey, do you want to come to this event? And, and you can start interacting with them there. So LinkedIn is a super powerful thing and it's a great thing to get support around and you shouldn't be doing it. So you should get support around it. Um, now, the third thing that um, virtual assistants can support you with, as you'll see on the next slide, is sending invoices. Now, I, I've got a confession to make to the world. I've never even logged into our zero, so I've never <laughs> sent an invoice at all. Um, and so when I have a sales conversation, um, basically I send a message on Slack, our communication tool, and it seems like magic, shoom, invoices get sent out. Um, so so that's my interaction. But Maureen, I know you have logged into our zero and you work very closely with Jing. So do you want to share some of the magic that Jing makes happen for us? Yeah, great. So um, originally I was doing all the invoicing and, um, yeah, it just gets very tedious and hard to manage. And even if you're, you know, a B2B high-value consultant where you're not sending that that many, there's still the um, – you've still got to think about it. And, you know, um, and often people don't even batch it very well at all. It's like, oh, you know, when was the last time? Oh, I must email them. Um, Carmen, did you know that a lot of small businesses are actually very behind on the invoices and don't even ask for money? So, um, it's a way, yeah, so to get your virtual assistant to help with you, that you, uh, sorry, help you with that um, can be really beneficial because they can, they can, you know, Jing's our accounts person, so it's her major, major focus. So she sends out the invoices. Um, she um, replies to any uh, emails from the clients about the invoices. Um, she's also set up system, systematic reminders in uh, in Zero, and you can do that in um, MYOB or whatever software that you're you're using for your invoicing. Um, and then she keeps track of um, you know how much money's owing. You know she sends Carmen and I um, reports, and um, they're quite helpful, aren't they, Carmen? Yeah, I find them really helpful. No, it lets me know where the client, each of the clients are at. So yeah. Yeah, so she'll send us a report on a Friday afternoon and we can see how much um, money's come in that that week, how much we've invoiced that week, how much we're um, due to invoice for the for the month. And so I just have a, a quick chat to Jing, you know, 15 minutes to half an hour every Monday morning. So I'm not saying that, you know, I, I release everything about, my, but about the business finances and just let somebody else handle it all. Um, it's really good to still oversee your strategy and know what's happening with your finances. Um, so I'd never say, you know, remove yourself totally. But um, as a small business owner, for you to be doing, you know, doing the doing, I think it's a really bad idea. And because I used to sometimes, I'd miss some as well, and then you're playing catch up and it's just, um, it's not good. And the other thing that she does is you can reconcile the payments uh, within Zero or your software. So, um, so you're always on top of what money has come in and what hasn't. Beautiful. And so, so what we're talking about today is the 10 admin tasks that you should never be doing in your business. And we're up to number three, which is sending invoices. So, so far we've all, we've talked about number one, which was responding to emails and direct messages. You should never be doing that. Two, connecting with people on LinkedIn. And we're up to three, sending invoices.
And so Maureen, one, as you'll see on the next slide, one of the common questions we get asked um, is what about security? So what are your thoughts around that? Um, what I like to, I like to not see it, your virtual assistant as, you know, and make judgments around what com country they're in and how trustworthy they're in and, and you know, all, all that stuff around security. Security is security. Whether you're hiring in Australia, whether you're hiring overseas, um, so I do the same as I would with any staff member, and that is, you know, you build the trust. You put as many, many measures in place as you usually would to protect the data you need to, to protect. Um, Jing's a really valuable member of staff. Um, I trust her wholeheartedly. And um, so I give her access to, you know, to the records that she needs access to. So um, it's like you wouldn't have someone who's been working with you for a week necessarily hand over everything to them, but it's usually a gradual, gradual thing. What do some other clients say about security, Carmen? Yeah, so obviously when you work with someone, you know, in any country, that there's that element of trust. The other thing um, is that most of our virtual assistants come actually from referrals from our existing virtual assistants. You know how in Australia good people know good people? Same in the Philippines. So we've got that um, that extra, like, layer of social security there. And then there's tools to share access to things as well. So, for example, I can share access to my Facebook account um, using LastPass or one pass or you know another password manager software where um, the team can actually get access um, but not know my password so there's some technology options around that as well so um, sending invoices is definitely one thing that you should never um, ever do you might not go as far as me and never log into zero I think you still need to have your strategy so thank you Maureen for holding that um, but sending invoices let, let's get rid of them let's get support so as you'll see in the next slide, we've got the fourth thing that you should never, ever be doing in your business and something you could get support around, which is taking meeting minutes. So you see we've got um, Chris there. He's an amazing um, virtual assistant with um, one of our clients. And he um, supports his clients around um, taking meeting minutes. So what was said, what decisions were made, who is doing what by when, um, which is the magical thing because I'm sure we've all had conversations before where we're going, well, what, what did we decide? Who was going to do what? What you know? Um, so it's really good to have that clarity. And so as you're saying the next slide, one of the main questions we get asked about virtual assistants is how good is their English? Now, what are your thoughts on that, Maureen? Uh <laughs> I'm not going to put you down, Carmen. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, a highly educated nation um, and the same with Australia being a highly educated nation. Some people's English skills, both written and verbally, are better than others and also depends on what you want them to do. So if you've got someone who's, you know, a highly skilled IT person building your website, they don't, they're not, you know, they're not front facing with your clients, sending emails or writing emails. So you potentially don't need the perfect, you know, English for that role. So, so overall, English is great, but it's about choosing the right person with the right English skills for what you need. Um, yeah. So what, what are your thoughts, Carmen? Yeah, so I completely agree. It depends on the role. And so when I speak to people, we do a lot of um, work in scoping the role and sometimes managing the scope as well. We, we, we're not unicorn hunters. Um, and it, But the short answer is, yes, we can find people who can take good minutes, who've got great English comprehension. We can find people that can write emails to your clients and do customer service. And we can find people that answer the phone. They, you know, they might not be able to do everything out you're after. So what we do is we work out what's the most important thing in your business and actually work out a strategy for that. So um, uh, taking meeting minutes is something that you may um uh, be doing yourself and something you should never ever do or something that you're not doing in your business at the moment that you think you might need to do. So Can I we're add covering... something to that, Carmen? Can I add? Yeah. Um, we're, we're finding now that as people are staying with, with us more and more, not only are they taking the meeting minutes, but sometimes they run the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, you know, they can put together agenda and, and obviously this is a bit advanced. We know you've had your, your VA mm -hmm. for a while, but there's those opportunities to be thinking and, you know, head, amazing Charles will run our, um, often run our marketing meetings for us where we don't have to come in. Um, and, you know, so he's holding all the balls and, and, and has everything there 
Um, so we just have to be there and present in the meetings. So really fantastic to take meeting minutes, but in the future, as your VA grows and gets to understand you and your business, they can potentially run the meetings for you. So that's number yeah. four. All right, so we're covering the 10 admin things that you should never, ever do be doing in your business. And so we've covered um, four things already. So um, testing my memory, Maureen, what were they? They were? Res responding to emails um, and direct messages, connecting with people on LinkedIn. So don't just connect to the sexy men. <laughs> you want a strategy behind it and you get your, your virtual assistant to do it for you. Um, sending invoices um, and helping with accounts um, and then taking meeting minutes. And what's number five, Carmen? Well, as you'll see in the next slide, number five is preparing documents and managing files. So I often have conversations with business owners and they like whisper in like hushed tones, like like a confession, like I, I'm, it's all a bit unorganised, Carmen, I don't have everything sorted. And I'm like, great, you'd be in the majority of business owners. If, I, if you told me you had everything sorted in your business, I'd think you're a psychopath. So um, <laughs> getting a virtual assistant to support you to um, get things sorted can be really helpful, especially if there's people that have come to us, they've been in business for, you know, ages, and they've got all these content, all this stuff everywhere. Um, and a, a virtual assistant can get in and roll their virtual sleeves up or their real sleeves um, and actually support you to file things away, work out what content you do have for your marketing and, and just get things um, in a nice, neat place. Uh, yeah, so, and, and, and Carmen, just on that, I feel like sometimes they're things that we put off uh, mm. and even just having a virtual assistant doing it for you helps you address things so that then it doesn't become a bigger mess so that you're yeah. actually, you know, acting on those things and getting all your files in, in order. Um, like, I don't know you, but, you know, in the old days, someone saying, oh, I want you to be on a podcast or my show or whatever, I need a picture of you. And you'd be, mm. you know, going through your files, trying to find your, you know, your picture. And now that everything's ordered, you just know where all the photos are. Um, or even better, you just get the VA to send it. <laughs> well, well, I was going to say, so if we combine a few of the things we discussed already, I was offered to be on a podcast the other day. Jonathan wrote to me, he said, he, this is the podcast, here's the links to it, you know, um, he'd already sussed her out. And I said, yes. And he goes, all right, this is the form. And there are a couple of things, new things that I had to write, but he just filled out the rest of it, got my picture and he sent it off, stuck it in my diary, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, as you'll see on the next slide. And then it was there in my diary, re ready to go. So um, as you'll see on the next slide, the sixth thing that you should never ever be doing is scheduling meetings. Um, uh, so this is a lovely Krizel. Um, um, she's one of uh, our client virtual assistants. Um, she's got a number of different roles, but one is scheduling meetings. So you'll see that colourful diary um, on the left-hand side of the slide. That's actually uh, from one of my days. And so you'll see uh, it's even colour-coded. So we've got um, the green things, which is a sales conversation, the brown things, which is another sales conversation, like the next stage. So we have like the first stage and the second stage sales conversations. Uh, I've actually got a podcast in there and, and a few other things. And you can see how my day is packed. Like I don't have time to look at all my other messages. Um, so it's great that Jonathan's doing all that for me. So by scheduling meetings, there's no back and forth. No, hey, Maureen, could you do Wednesday at 10? Oh, yeah. oh no, I can't do 10.30. Oh, no, no. What about Thursday? So there's none of that. Um, yeah. It's in your diary with all the information you need. So each of these meetings, they're in our CRM. Um, the, the diary entries have got the information I need. The podcast thing has got the information I need in the, to do the podcast. Um, and it really means you can maximise your day. You can have days like what's pictured in that slide, um, like full on, um, and you can handle it. Yeah, and what I love about it, uh, Carmen, is that that point, because what people sometimes think, well, I can put I can put a simple thing in my diary, but it's like what about the Zoom link? What about um, when they cancel? 
Um, people even use, you know, might use calendar managing software. So, you know, a meeting, mm. appoint, you know, appointments, etc. But it's still, it's a messy world we live in and it's never that straightforward. So even if you do le use, you know, link software, it's still good to have a VA behind the scenes who can handle it all and oversee it all for you so that you don't have to get there in there trying to work it all out yourself. And as Carmen says, you just, you know, look at your day in the morning um, and then you can click in and then all the information is there in um, in your Google Calendar. Yeah, and Jonathan's already confirmed the day before that, you know, the people who hadn't said yes are coming and and then you can get cracking for the day. Um, sometimes he's a little bit sneaky because he slots things in in the afternoon. I mean, that day I did get half an hour break, but um, on other days he'd slot something in in, the, in that um, uh, spot as well potentially. So um, that's the sixth thing that you should not be doing in your business. The seventh thing thing admin tasks that you should never ever been doing um is answering clients on the phone now obviously this is contextual so we do um have some support team in australia who um, are loving the clients but there are some businesses where there's a high volume of calls maybe you're a cleaning business um and you do want a virtual assistant to be the first port of call they can confirm bookings provide answers to things um, and stop you from being interrupted all the time and like schedule another time um, for um, that person to have a more in-depth discussion with you if they need to. So Maureen, what's your take on this one? Yeah, I think this is a really, a real um, underutilised one. I think we think it's all too hard often. Um, we get concerned about different accents and, um, and, and, and whatnot and I think it'd be really valuable to your business to get that person, because when I'm ringing, I'd rather have someone answer the phone than be leaving messages all the time. Like people want, you know, um, quick time responses these days. So, you know, um, and you probably come and could talk about the tools that people need to be able to do this, but I'd love to be able to, you know, call, get a response, at least I know I've been heard, um, and then I'm being directed to where I go. I need to go to next. So yeah. what is what, what sort of tools do people need to be able to do this, Carmen? Yeah, so there's all sorts of tools. Um, uh, it really depends on the volume of calls people are making, the functionality they want. So what we do is uh, once people become clients, we actually support them to select the tool if they don't already use one in their business that their virtual assistant's going to use. And it goes from like $10 a month to you know hundreds of dollars a month, depending on the functionality you want. But there's plenty of tools out there um, to support you with that. Um, so answering clients um, on the phone is a great one. And as you'll see from those crazy day in that calendar, um, you know, I, I don't have an opportunity to answer the phone on those days. So it is really required to have someone answer my phone um, in lieu of me being able to. So we're going through the 10 admin things that you should never, ever be doing in your business. And we are up to number eight, which you'll see on the next slide. So it's communicating with other employees. So in addition to your virtual assistant being able to communicate with your clients, they can also communicate um, with other team members. So um, she, this is Sheila here. She works within our team and she's actually responsible for um, talking to uh, many, many people within in our team, collating information um, and sharing it. So when I speak with her, she's actually got all the information I need to be able to make um, some strategic decisions. So uh, what are your thoughts on this one, Maureen? Um, yeah, I think it's um, it's really important to, um, to have someone there who's... Um, uh, yeah, it can hold all the information and organise all the information. And again, it's to be able to get it out of your brain and off your plate and you'll have that key contact person in your organisation um, that you can go to. Um, and also, often people don't think that, um, you know, virtual assistant as leaders, I think they get a bad rap. Whereas I really feel like, you know, Sheila is a leader in our team and she touches base with our 82 virtual assistants um, um, once a week. So, you know, how we know how they're traveling as well. So in your business, are there people that you're not touching base with? Um, and again, you know, a middle person that, that you don't have to touch base with everyone, they could touch base. And if there are any issues, then they can um, let you know. So I think it's a really great idea to have someone like this in your business. 
Yeah, and so there's some other examples is a web developer. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that come together to making a website. So virtual assistants can act to coordinate some of those things and connect those people, make sure they're talking. A lawyer as well, um, they can help uh, make the contracts like dot I's and cross T's and contracts and actually um, have a chat to all the lawyers to make sure that, um, that, that that's all being coordinated as well. So um, there's many situations in which you can actually utilize a virtual assistant to bring some of your team together as well. So yeah. we are almost up to lucky last, second lucky last, nine um, on the next slide, which is onboarding new clients. So you'll see the lovely Mark here. He works with one of our clients who's an education provider and he onboards new clients. So he calls them up once they've decided to become um, clients and actually ask them if they've got the right information, they've been able to access the platform and how's it all going. Um, and he just makes sure that they feel really cozy and supported. And so you might want to think about how this works in your business around making sure that your clients feel supported, new clients, maybe even existing clients, how they can feel supported and loved. Maureen, do you have anything to share around this? Um, we put all this energy into getting clients. So there's, you know, we always want the new shiny thing and the more clients and the more clients. Um, and where a lot of businesses fall down is especially in that early stages where you're building relationship with clients after you've converted them and, you, you know, you're going to start providing your amazing product or service. And it's real missed opportunity um, because there is, um, I'm not sure exactly what the stat is, but a lot of people, you know, leave within the first couple of months. So it is really important to, um, to have that key contact there to be able to onboard, to be able to provide, you know, that one-on-one -on -one touch. I know a lot of stuff's automated these days, but also to have a real person who's there who cares about your clients and helping them feel supported um, is really, really important, especially in the beginning stages where the client may not know how things work or, you know, when, when's the delivery going to happen or who do I speak to next or how do I do this? It's really great to have that personal touch and a VA helping you do that. Yeah, beautiful. All right, lucky last. Shall we do a drum roll? Yeah. On the next slide, um, managing clients in your CRM. So I speak to a lot of business owners who go, I've got a CRM, but I'm just not putting the information into it. It's more common than what you think. And so um, your virtual assistant can help you with that. So uh, once again, when Jonathan organises for me to meet with someone, he also adds that information into the CRM if they're not already in there. And even though we're meeting on Zoom, he also gets their phone number so we can use that as a backup. So he makes sure that all that information is in there. Um, we also have a deal pipeline and he makes sure that's all updated. And he ensures that each person is allocated to the correct automation sequences. So depending on the outcome of the conversation, it depends on what sequences they get. Um, and so this is a huge one. And I think something that a lot of business owners could really do, some support, do with some support around. Yeah. And it's one where, um, you know, you start off, it's small and it's really manageable um, and it can get messy really quickly and really easily. So the sooner you get someone to help you to um, organise your sequences, um, you know, the better um, and everyone's placed in the right place. The other thing to realise is that this is, again, um, having a VA there asking you for the strategy or getting, you know, getting the ideas out of your head helps you actually think it through. Otherwise, you can so often just put on the too hard basket, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. And things like CRMs are things that we sort of put off. So if you put someone in a role to help you do this, it helps you address it um, and get it get it streamlined um, much quicker. And even though to, you might be going, oh, well, that one thing doesn't take much time or energy, that one thing can be so beneficial to your business, even if it's not today, but, you know, it might help you start getting clients um, in three or four weeks. It might help your clients stay longer. Um, so there's all those accumulatively um, beneficial aspects as well. Yeah. Beautiful. And Anne just commented um, saying that she's uh, got a psychologist friend who th she thinks could do with some support. Um, and and how, how can she like share uh, with, with her friend 
uh, what virtual assistants can do without <laughs> sounding too salesy. What, what's your advice on that, Maureen? Um, so often when we, we've got a great idea and we just want to share it with someone, we've got a solution for you and, and the person's not in the same energy as, as you at the time. So what I would do um, is it's a great question. Um, I would um, ask them, hey, you know, how's everything going in your business? Have a discussion. How's the admin? How's that? And they'll go, oh, um, you know, it's just too much and I'm juggling balls and, and whatever, the usual drama that they might share with you because we love sharing our drama. Um, and then I would say, um, hey, um, I actually saw this really great um, show the other day and it had some information about how admin things, you know, what admin things, a, you know, a virtual assistant could help you with. Um, did you want me to send you the link? So I think it's just, you know, you're not shoving anything down anyone's throat. It's just let them get in their drama. And if you say, hey, I've got a solution, um, then I, I think that's that's the way to go. Um, and so it's sort of more of a drip, drip, drip baby steps rather than going, hey, here's a solution for you. Um, anything yeah. you'd like to add to that, Carmen? I just think it's really kind of Anne to think about her friend. So I, I think that's yeah. um, awesome to, to share the love. So today we have covered the 10 admin things that you should not ever be doing. And I thought, Maureen, we'll do like a final recap, shall we? Like power yeah. recap. All yeah, right. Exactly. So they can... Um, uh, support you to respond to emails and direct messages number one thing i think this and is like calm down like super like if i if i didn't have this my head would just be filled with detail yeah so direct messages you know it's not just um so it's it's linkedin it's facebook uh instagram you know twitter the list goes on so they, it, the only know, thing they don't have access to is my tinder <laughs> And she thought about it, let me tell you. I know. I was like thinking, can I get <laughs> a phone call? Like, no. these, these sexy men, you know, please. I'm I wouldn't put Jonathan through that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yes, so, so, yeah. yeah. And my phone, this, you know, it tells me how many hours I spend on it. And I've got a virtual assistant. I just go, oh my God, well, lots actually. But imagine how much time I'd spend on it if I didn't have help, if I had to reply to everything, for goodness sake. So you can reply to um, emails and direct messages. They can pretend to be you. We prefer it if they, you know, a lot of the times they just introduce themselves and say, hey, I'm John. Um, you know, I thought I'd get to this message. I'm getting to this message quicker than Carmen could. You know, and then give the information or answer the question or whatever. So number one yeah. is responding to emails and direct messages. What's number two, Carmen? Connecting with people on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a super powerful tool and if you, you're not using it, like, do it <laughs> and um, get some support to do it as well. Uh, this is, like, really low-hanging fruit. We've supported so many businesses to um, really put themselves out there on LinkedIn. I just spoke to someone this morning, had a sales conversation, and we were referred from someone from LinkedIn who I don't know. Um, yeah. And that's just yeah. because we're, we're using LinkedIn and getting support. So Carmen and I connected, to, you know, about 18,000 people each. Um, so we're using a beautiful tool today, you know, and live streaming this to LinkedIn. So, um, you know, and the, the only people are going to see it are the people we're connected with. So if you're not connected with the people, they can't see you. And you've probably got this amazing thing you can offer. So, um, or educate people around, etc. So um, it's really great to get your VA to help you connecting with people on LinkedIn. Carmen, what's yeah. number three? Sending invoices. Yes, the dreaded invoices. We know a lot of business owners put it off. It's a lot of, it, you know, it's it's higgledy-piggledy, which is the technical term. Uh, so your VA can help you systemize it. Um, they can automate it. They can really help you get your finances humming along, making sure you've got your cash flow happening. And what's number four, Carmen? Taking meeting minutes. Blah. Who likes doing that? And you can, obviously, so many meetings these days are happening virtually, uh, and, but, you know, we need to take minutes. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean that um, we don't need to keep on track of things. So a virtual assistant can just sit there in the background and take all your minutes, um, store them for you so that you know exactly who's doing what and when. What's um, number five, Carmen? Preparing documents and managing files. So um, it's really important to um, get your VA to manage files, to systemise things for you so you know where to find them or you know where they can find them for you. 
Um, and making things look beautiful. Um, you know, we've like got so many great things. Day, let, let's just say Maureen and I didn't make them. No. <laughs> Terminator. <laughs> yes, thank you, Charles. You did an amazing job. You know, um, Janelle does a yeah, A lot of the VAs do amazing jobs and making things look um look pretty. Have you ever stayed there like at eleven o'clock at night, going, "Oh shit, I've got a I've got a presentation tomorrow. I've got my do my slides," and they look terrible. Like, how professional yeah. do you look? You don't. Don't do them. No, 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 no. Eleven o'clock evenings for you. Um, get a great virtual assistant to help you. So that is number five, preparing documents and managing files. What's number six, Carmen? Scheduling meetings. Yes, and most people go, well, it just doesn't take very long to schedule meetings or I've got a great app to do it. Um, it's so good to have someone there managing because it's not only scheduling, it's rescheduling and rescheduling some more. We all know what it's like. People cancel on you and change and it's just a bit of a nightmare. Not only can your VA schedule, but they can put in all the information that's needed in there. They could do the research on the person for you, put the link in, um, put the information for the, the person you're meeting, what they need to know before the meeting as well. So they can do a really great job on scheduling meetings for you. Number seven, Carmen. Answering clients on the phone. So often this is a really untapped one. You know, you could have a VA as the face of your business who could be the first port of call, a bit like a, um, a receptionist who could direct, pers you know, direct uh, your clients and your potential clients to the right people um, and answer really simple problems um, so you don't have to. What's number eight, Carmen? Communicating with other employees. So, um, it, say for a website build um, for a particular project that you're working on, um, instead of you having to totally lead it and communicate with everyone, you could have a VA in there doing all of that for you. Um, checking in with people, ensuring it's all running smoothly. So, communicating with other employees can be a really a real bonus. And what's number nine? Onboarding new clients so they feel loved. Yes, we often lose clients when we don't onboard them properly. They're just like, oh, you know, you put effort into me before you got me. It's a bit like a marriage, isn't it? You wooed me with the dates and the flowers, you know, romantic dinners, and now we're married and yet, you know, you're not even paying me any attention anymore. So you want you want to really love your clients continually um, and it's great to have a VA in there, especially in the start of the relationship, making sure they've got everything they need, they know how it works, whether they're getting something delivered or whether they need to provide you something for the website build or whatever it is. Um, and, you know, they need to send documents that they haven't sent yet. You could always have someone on the phone there to touch base with them. So that's number nine, um, helping onboard new clients. And number 10, Carmen. Lucky last, managing client contacts in your CRM. CRMs, um, we know we need them. Um, even if they're small, even if you've got 10 people, it will grow um, and often we end up with a mess. So it's really important to help uh, get a VA on board who can manage your, your CRM, um, make sure there's all the details that need to be um, to be in there. Um, they can run campaigns for you and, and really support you to make sure that all your data is in the right place for when you need it. So there you have it, the 10 admin tasks that you should not be doing um, and how you can get a virtual assistant to support you to do it. Now, I know a lot of people will be going, that's great, that, you know, it's a great idea, but there's often fear around delegating and how does it work and all those things, which is fantastic. I love that people are thinking of those things. I just spoke to a new client. They're starting with virtual assistant on Monday and they're feeling afraid. They're feeling uncomfortable because it's new and it can be a little bit scary, but we support people along the way. So if you do want to investigate further, if it's a right move for you, if you want to have a chat about how it would work, what would they do for you? How would you delegate? How we support, you know, any other questions you have, flick us an email, info at globalteams.com.au. Um, and if you do want to chat, Jonathan will organise it. Yeah, Carmen won't be organising it. She'll just be turning up. <laughs> there when it's in my diary. <laughs> I know, and she's really there. She loves it. She's like, oh, I just spoke to this amazing person. Um, and just something about Carmen too, she's really straight um, up front a person. And if she, she will honestly tell you if she thinks you're not quite ready or you need to do put some other um, ducks in a line. 
um, and will say, hey, we're not quite ready. You could do this, do this, you know, maybe come back and talk to me another time. So, um, yeah, so we're not going to be going, oh, come, come to us, come to us. You know, we're the perfect solution. We may not be, but we can help you get a whole lot of clarity around whether a VA is right for you and whether a VA is right for you right now. So thanks, everyone, for joining us. See ya. Bye.